Shalom, everybody, and welcome to our celebration of educators for Educator Shabbat. I hope you've enjoyed the previous videos that we've had um, from Joan Epstein, who is a professor of music at Eckerd College, um, Pam Himmel, who is a uh, eighth grade science teacher at Carwise Middle School, and Alicia Buchanan, who is our preschool director here at uh, Congregation B'nai Israel at Pauline Rivkin Early Education Center. So each, um, each educator, I hope you got a chance to uh, listen to the experiences and challenges and unexpected benefits as each of these three educators discuss the things that they're experiencing. So I'm going to um, let you know what has been happening educationally at CBI. And I hope that some of you have been, you know, taking advantage of things. So I'm going to jump right in. And I will say that as we were crafting what our, our, uh, our offerings would look like, our biggest purpose was to bring people together to create community, give people a chance to see each other. Because if you are experienced in online education, you do know that there is a lot of things out there. There are a lot of, uh, a lot of opportunities that are really um, excellent, excellent quality. And we want to provide you with the different quality and that is fellowship and togetherness. And that's what, you know, that's what we're all missing right now. So I would say that one of the uh, unexpected successes has been with uh, adult education. So we have uh, the rabbi is continuing with his the uh, mission and munchies and his observant life and his coffee talks. And uh, Steve Ween was able to uh, take his uh, Talmud class online. So instead of going every other week, we've been going uh, every week on uh, Mondays. We've also added a, a CBI shared bookshelf of uh, short stories and poetry on Mondays and a Torah at 10 on Fridays. So I will say that one of the really wonderful benefits is that we've had people who haven't had an opportunity to come to Steve's class on Tuesdays, which was typically in the, in the afternoon. And we're have, we're, there are a lot of people who are able to join virtually who hadn't had the opportunity. So we, I mean, I'm finding that the educational opportunities for adults, for um, potentially people who have flexible schedule or are retired are, are great. You can see each other and if you have been coming regularly, you'll see that it really, it is a community that's developing. It's not watching a screen. I mean, it is watching a screen, but there is a community that's, that's developing. And it, so it's been a sort of an unexpect, unexpected plus to be able to reach a, more, a wider variety of people. We had, uh, we were lucky this Monday for our, our shared bookshelf, Roberta Qual, who came and spoke at our synagogue on a Sunday in January, was able to, uh, you know, continue to talk about her book, which was Remix Judaism. And we're certainly doing a lot of remixing now. Um, so whether or not you uh, felt comfortable joining our Zoom, um, a Zoom Seder, or doing a live stream service. It's been quite a, um, a challenge to our traditions and to what we need, to our, our personal needs. So yeah, it's been a serious remixing. So that's, um, and so in addition, I'm able to continue with um, um, beginning Hebrew class, with a Torah cantillation class, and so adult ed has been, I think, um, an interesting success. So for me personally, the other areas that, you know, I'm involved with education has been, and has been continuing our B'nai Mitzvah tutoring. So, which has been um, harder, as, as many of you who tune into Zoom sessions, you know that the audio isn't always fabulous. 
So I've been a, done a mixture of FaceTiming with students and uh, Zoom classes with students. So, but one nice thing for me is I have built up a relationship with all of these students. So it is great to check in with them one-on-one. -on -one. We spend a lot of time sort of processing what's happening in school and as well as working on their Haftorah portions or their Torah reading. Um, I'm sure you, you know that it's been, a, it's been a little bit of traumatic for kids. How, are my, will the service happen? What's going to be? So it's, uh, it's good to connect with them on a regular basis to sort of sort out these understandable emotional issues that happen with, uh, with, uh, with planning things. So, but that has been going, it's really been going great. So it's, I'm just, in fact, I'm between two students right now. So it is really a highlight of my day to get to see them. So um, the other thing, so the biggest challenge for me as an educator has been uh, our PRTT classes, kindergarten through seventh grade and, um, and youth group. So, Interestingly enough, my best attendance, the older the kids get, the better attendance I have. So what I find is, and, and I think you'll, you'll see, I'm going to share with you uh, something that, um, uh, something that you said will take me, so this is one of, one of the other challenges of uh, meetings is to, manage my screen content so you can see what it's like. So I'm going to show you a little bit of one of the content pieces that we have done. We did this for Yom Ma'ut, and I took a video of the kids. We were making pita. So we, uh, we had to drive some yeast around. So <laughs> Evidently, everybody's baking bread or challah. So we had to um, make sure manage the uh, um, ingredients. And one, I will tell you that one student didn't have any ingredients and this student stayed with the class for well over an hour because she was so interested in seeing everybody else. So this was our, um, I'll share a little bit of our video. This was our PRTT making PETA. Do anything online. Mm -hmm. They literally just give you work and you do it. It takes me an hour or less to do it every day. And there's attendance and sometimes there's a video chat, but you don't get to see anybody except the teacher. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So we don't um, get yeah. to uh, use video chat, but we have the ability to remove each other from the call and mute the teacher. So, and do you guys have like endless amounts of worksheets and there's nothing, there's no really online assignments, even if it's not video chat, like sometimes we'll make pre-record videos and like go through a slideshow, but there's no real like interaction. So I'm going to fast forward a bit. So, All right. so Akko is, is outside. A little bit more. So that was one of our uh, sessions. So in the midst of making PETA, while the PETA was rising, we showed uh, videos. Um, it's a wonderful series called Postcards from Israel. And the kids, you know, took a chance to watch. They talked about what different communities were like. So, but one of the things that you, I don't, hopefully you could hear the kids. One of the things that they talked about was the fact that they don't see each other. Some of the, uh, the teachers in the, in the public schools have turned off the cameras so the kids see only the teacher, they don't see each other. And uh, they have assignments that they have to finish on their own. So it's your, for kids who are independent learners, it's not bad. But for kids who really need other kids, who need the discipline with the teacher, who need the feedback and things like that, it's not, it's been a, 
a hard situation for them. So one of the things that they have really enjoyed in PRTT is really being with each other. Uh, and it's just a little bit of togetherness um, really goes a long way with these kids. So the other, um, so another piece is for PRTT. How do you handle a group meeting? Because one of the, um, one of the limits of some Zoom sessions are there only 40 minutes. So with ours uh, through the synagogue, we can have a longer Zoom session. So what we did in order to create the community, give the kids a chance to see each other, was to have our youngest learners, uh, kindergarten, first and second grade, meet from 10 to 11. And then the older kids, third through seventh grade, would meet 11 to 12. And we would bridge that time in between with uh, a cantor would join us for music. So we would mute everybody except the cantor and he would um, play music for the kids. So I'm gonna share with you one of the other things that we did, which was um, I sent out an instructional video and the words to the parents and the kids, um, so we had, uh, at, a, at a certain time, we recorded everybody play or uh, uh, singing, you know, the song to the, the cantor played it on his guitar and the kids had actions. And it was, uh, as we were leading into, um, it was sort of uh, saddling Earth Day and uh, Yom Hatzma'ut. So it was a song, Adama Vishamayim. So the kids did uh, hand motions. They did Adama, they pointed to the ground, Vishamayim for the sky, Kom Ha'esh, like Havdala and Bitzil Hamayim, the sound of water. So they acted it out. And then I want you to pay particular attention to free dance because <laughs> that's personally my favorite. So here's a little piece on the um, fun educational things that we are trying to do to build community for the kids. And this one was a whole lot of fun. My favorite part. So that was a, a, a fun thing that we did, um, but yes, it is a challenging to uh, keep the group together. We've had as many as uh, 25 um, different screens at the same time. One of the, uh, when I, I thought, perhaps I'll be able to do some family education, but when you're taking care of families, you know, you understand the parents are, they're managing their work schedules, their children's education, but they're, you know, they're still tuning in. So it's, it's, been, it's been a big challenge, but at the same time, the kids have been very, have been great. They've uh, participated. They've, uh, I have homework sent to me, pictures of things. I've had parents cut out um, flashcards for, um, we did uh, Tzvaim, the colors, and um, worked at home. So the parents have been really, really wonderful. So there's one last piece of, of educational thing that I'm working on, and this was, this was also a very fun thing because the, one of the last uh, pieces of my, uh, you know, profession, professional life at CBI is youth group. So, and youth group is probably one of the harder things because the kids, 
they have to uh, be with other be with each other virtually. And the older the kids get, the more they crave their the company of their peers. So it's probably the biggest challenge and why um, I was very pleased I got feedback from the rabbi this morning that one of the older kids said she loves Hebrew school. And I said, really? And because she gets to see everybody. So it's, um, you do what you can. So here is um, the last thing, which is very fun. I had all of the, the Kadima kids took a picture of themselves and they sent me a, um, they sent me uh, selfies and we put it together in a montage, which you'll, you'll see the, the pictures on the uh, left-hand part of the screen. And, uh, and it's called, uh, there's a virtual puzzle it's called I'm a puzzle. So the kids are, are actually in a, uh, a jigsaw puzzle that they can do, that they can put together virtually. So here's, uh, here's our wonderful Kadima kids. You'll notice somebody, um, somebody had a haircut from home. So I wonder, I'm not sure if that's why the mask was there. But so this is, this is one of the ways we connect with each other in a, in a fun way, in a um, just keeping ourselves together way. In, in one of the ways that the kids really, just really need. So anyway, education, it always, always a challenge, always a joy. Um, it's been hard for all the teachers uh, not being around kids. But we are the people of the book. Sometimes we're the people of the Zoom. And uh, if you are an educator, pat yourselves on the back uh, and making a difference. So I want to wish everybody a Shabbat Shalom. And uh, I also thought that you'd like to see the kids. So I, I thought that that might be fun for everybody to see uh, what we've been doing. And um, hopefully we will see each other soon. Thank you very much and have a wonderful Shabbat.